Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Foff Ambition 610. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make buttonholes. So to start with, use your buttonhole foot. This is what it looks like right here. And on the bottom of the foot, this is the part that grips your fabric. And then there's little channels where your button as it's being formed is going to fit right in those little channels right there. So this is made to sew beautiful buttonholes. Now, to start with, you need to get your button that you're going to put on your garment and raise this up here, put that right there. And notice when I did that, it actually changed the distance right here. And that's going to help the machine know how long to make your buttonhole and make it consistently that same length. Okay, so to put it on your machine, you take your regular foot off. I'm gonna put that right down there in the accessory tray. Make sure that the five is right set up and that way you'll know you got it on the, the correct way. Put the foot down like that. Now, the thread needs to get into that hole there and I'm gonna show you a quick, easy way to do that. So put a piece of fabric under there, do needle down, needle up, lift up your presser foot, pull the fabric out, and you've put that thread right through there. Very easy way to do that. Okay, so when you're sewing buttonholes on a garment, like a shirt weight fabric, make sure you have two layers and some interfacing or three layers of fabric. I've seen nice dress shirts made with three layers of fabric and that third layer in the middle is acts like the interfacing. So you don't want just two layers because it's not quite enough to support the stitches. You want three layers. So I'm just going to use it this way. And then I'm going to mark the begin the center of my buttonhole. That's the part that once you're all done you're going to be cutting right along there. And the beginning of the buttonhole. Now this buttonhole, the way it forms on this machine is it starts from here and it ends there. Now I'm using a friction pen. Friction pen is great for marking buttonholes and doing other marking on your lighter colored fabric because what it does is with the friction or with heat from your iron, it will disappear. It will change to actually just a very pale white. So on lighter colored fabrics, you won't see it at all. So this is a great pen to use. But no matter what marking tool you use on your fabric, make sure it's a fabric marker, uh, meant for fabric, but no matter what marker you use, I always like to make sure that my marks are small enough so that they're either covered up by the stitches or going to be trimmed out. And in this case, that's what I'm doing with my marks here. Okay, so I'm going to put this under here like this and line it up that way. I'm not quite ready to get started, but I will tell you that these red marks that are right in here, I'll show you with my little pointer, these red marks match up to the marks that I put on the fabric. And then you also want to make sure that it's parallel on the side here, that the edge of your fabric is parallel to the foot, because that way you won't get a cockeyed buttonhole, okay? Then we need to choose our buttonhole. <clears throat> so I like buttonhole number 19 up here. It's a good standard all-purpose square-ended buttonhole. So one nine is give me the buttonhole. It says to use number five foot, use interfacing or a stabilizer of some sort, just like I was talking about. Make sure you do not have your IDT. Make sure that's up, uh, out of the way. Um, I'm gonna just leave the tension the way it is. Then, as soon as you've selected your buttonhole, immediately pull down the buttonhole lever. It's kind of hidden up there, so let that be a kind of a one-two process. You choose your buttonhole, you pull down the lever. That needs to be behind that first knob there, and that's going to be the part that tells the machine how long to make your buttonhole. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to get started here. I think I got it all lined up all right. I like to use the start stop button with this because the buttonhole, the machine will stop as soon as the buttonhole is formed. And for the first couple of stitches, just keep your finger on the thread. That'll help keep it out of the way. And there we go. Now notice it makes a long straight stitch, or actually a short straight stitch to begin with. 
and that way the two halves of the buttonhole are formed going the same direction. That's important because as long as they're formed in the same direction, they'll be the same density on both sides of the buttonhole. Okay, pull that out of there. Uh, I don't know if you were watching, but it does make a locking stitch right there at the end, so you do not need to tie off your threads. You can just trim them right down to the fabric, like that. A little bit right there. And this is your buttonhole. Now, next thing you do is you cut your buttonhole. And I like to make sure and uh, protect the end of my buttonhole. Now you see I'm putting a pin right there just this side of the bar tack and that pin is there to help protect that bar tack. Start at the end here and cut my buttonhole. After I do that, I also like to kind of trim out some of these extra uh, threads that like to poke out there just to make a nice neat buttonhole. That's one thing that you can say, well, I made this shirt myself. See how nice and neat those buttonholes are? And you can make as many buttonholes as you want. And lots of different kinds of buttonholes, too. As you can see up here, you've got the round-in buttonhole, a uh, keyhole buttonhole like that. Uh, one has round-in on both ends. And this one is met, meant for sweater knits, knits up here. Okay, so that's your buttonhole. Uh, when you make a buttonhole, make sure that you do a test buttonhole to make sure it fits your button. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the button out of there and make sure it fits. Let's put that through there. There it is. It should fit just a little bit snug because you don't want the button coming unbuttoned hole and out of the buttonhole when you're wearing it. But it shouldn't be so tight that you have to push it through. If it is tight, it might mean that you haven't cut it quite enough. And if it's too loose, well, next time don't cut it quite as far. Now, the buttonhole foot will work for buttons up to about an inch long. And after that, it's kind of too big. But keep in mind, a buttonhole is basically a hole in your fabric that's bound around the edges. So the longer your buttonhole, the bigger that hole is in your fabric. So it kind of makes sense to have a limit there on how big your button is. If you have one of those big decorative buttons, let it be a decorative button and put like a snap behind it or something like that. Okay, so that's buttonholes. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If it has, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos here on our Montevilla Sewing Center YouTube channel, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.